Hi, well, it's Gwendolyn here. I hope you've had a really good week. Um, nearing the weekend here. Um, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I'm quite ready for the weekend. It's been a long week. Um, hopefully you've got something nice planned wherever you are. Um, great to see your corrected essays. I had a look at those. Um, you did a good job of implementing the suggestions. Um, so good job with that. Um, and also great to see now your next set of essays. Uh, let's go ahead and look here at your task two on technology. Um, yeah, very well written essay, well, very clear and coherent, uh, great uh, variety of language within your essay. Um, you did a great job with the task response, um, looking at both sides of the issue, uh, with two good ideas. Um, I thought Maybe your example for your P2 idea could have been a little bit stronger, and I'll talk to you about when we get there. I'm being a little harsh there though, Will. Um, it's still very good uh, compared to what I see from a lot of the other students, um, but I want to make sure that you're doing the best that you can do. Um, so I just want to give you a slightly better example there. There are one or two grammatical things, but nothing too major. Um, so let's go ahead and read through it. One of the biggest discussions today is related to whether human beings should adapt to the new technological culture or vice versa. This issue is associated with the question about the effects of technology on us. This essay will consider both topics using examples from, from Colombia and the UK to demonstrate points and support arguments. Good, very strong introduction there, Will. Um, you've used the structure perfectly. I, I don't have any um, issues with the introduction. I thought you've, you've used some good um, vocabulary there. Um, yeah, great job. To begin with, good transitional phrase. It is clear that we need to embrace the modern trends in terms of technological advances. Most of the recently released devices, good, good different use of phrasing here instead of using technology. Great to see that. So most of the recently released devices were invented to improve our living conditions and health. Take, for example, those Colombian soldiers who have been injured during the still active internal conflict. Many of them have lost parts of their bodies, eyes, legs, arms, etc. And due to the advances here, instead of on biotechnology, I would use the preposition in, in biotechnology quite difficult the prepositions in and on which one to use sometimes they're interchangeable um, from my perspective here i would think that the in biotechnology is a more natural uh, preposition here so due to the advances in biotechnology it is now possible to replace them um, by and then here i think with uh, again another one of those tricky ones uh, with cybernetic or artificial parts. Um, sometimes interchangeable, but I think with is more natural here. Therefore, there is no reason to be afraid of adapting to adapting our world to technology. Good, really good idea here, fantastic example. Very well written P1. Um, as I said, I like the use of different synonym there, release devices. Um, Living conditions is good phrasing there. Um, cybernetic or artificial parts um, is great. Um, great that um, maybe you could have used limbs there, since you don't think you used limbs anywhere else. That might have been a higher level word to use there. Um, but good. So your P2. Additionally, although some people believe that technology makes us weaker and less intelligent, there's ample evidence to contradict this. New inventions allow us to increase significantly our intellectual frames and even to prevent future health problems. Genetically, namely, bad memory or psychological issues. Yeah, there were a lot of um, <coughs> adjectives and adverbs here, which I think kind of messed with the cohesion a little bit. Um, I think I would do just a little, a few little changes here, Will. I just want to reorder some of your positioning of your um, 
your editors and your adverbs. So new inventions allow us to significantly increase our intellectual frames and even to prevent future, and I would say genetic health problems, um, taking out the genetic, the um, adverb form and put genetic health problems, comma, namely bad memory. Uh, and maybe not, not focus on the psychological issues. Do full stop here, because really you want to be very specific about the task response. Is technology making us intellectually weaker or more intelligent? So here we can talk about bad memory. So I think your idea was good. I just thought maybe you could have a stronger example. So let's look at what you put then. A recent study conducted by Oxford University shows that during the last three decades in the UK, it has been possible to prevent more than 20% of common diseases thanks to new medical advances. Um, yeah, so maybe you could be more specific here. Um, uh, you could say something like, um, shows that during the last three decades in the UK, it's been possible to, to prevent more than 20% of common diseases, comma, such as dementia and Alzheimer's, thanks to new medical devices. So by putting in these two specific di di um, diseases that affect the brain and our mental capacity, I think it will be more relevant to the task response. Um, um, and then maybe some sort of summarizing sentence here. I think you've got enough word count you could do just, um, and you know, this has helped increase our intellectual ability um, beyond our previous ages, something like that. Um, good idea, good example. I think just make it a little more relevant to uh, making sure that how is technology making us intellectually more intelligent. To conclude from the examples um, of Colombian soldiers and the academic research and the arguments given, I strongly believe that it is absolutely necessary to adapt uh, necessary necessary for us to adapt to technology just changing your word order there i also predict that in the future we will enjoy uh much more benefits if we adopt this policy good very very strong essay um well fantastic job there let's go ahead and look at your task one okay well i had to read through your task one i thought you did a good job here um in terms of the task response of comparing and contrasting the data, you've done that exactly the way we need to see it in the IELTS task one. And you've used some range of, so you have used a range of language um, to, to describe your, um, to transition between the ideas, which is great. A couple of things before I read through it. So, these are numbers thousands per year. So just look at the title here. Expected city visits by country, thousands per year. So this means 100,000 visitors will likely go to Paris from the USA. 100,000. So what you've done here is you kept saying 20 per thousand. So it's not actually correct. What we really would have seen one deserves two zero see the number twenty thousand which is two zero comma zero 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 so that was a mistake all throughout um, something that just needs to be corrected it was just a misinterpretation of the chart and the labeling there okay let's go ahead and read through it the bar chart gives a breakdown of the quantity of visits expected to london paris madrid and istanbul in 2018 Units are measured in thousands, and three different countries of origin are taken into account. Good, very strong introduction there. Um, quantity, great word there. Breakdown is good. Um, taken into account is a great phrase. Good. Overall, it is clear that most people from the United States will probably visit Paris, comma, here, whereas tours from Mexico will be attracted uh, mostly to mostly mostly by Madrid. I debatable, but I I would think two is stronger. 
will be attracted mostly to Madrid and eventually people from Canada will go mainly to Istanbul. Good, good uh, overall uh, introduction there. Um, will probably visit. Good, you're using the future tense. Will be attracted. Uh, good. Um, good synonym here, tourist. Um, great, some good different language in there. Mainly, great to see um, these adverbs in there as well. As shown by the chart, whilst 100,000, yeah, if I can just fix your number there, whilst 100,000 Americans will visit Paris in 2018, uh, the figures, instead of these, the figures for Canadians and Mexicans show a marked contrast. Good, good language there. Those for the latter are predicted to reach uh, just over 20,000. And those for the former uh, at above 40,000. Good, predicted, good word. Um, great use of latter and former. Um, good. On the other hand, it is, it is interesting that London is estimated to be the second main destination for Americans and Canadians with 80,000 and rough about, or roughly is a good word as well, roughly 50,000 visitors respectively. In contrast, this figure is completely different for Mexicans, comma, with just over 20,000 tourists going to the same city. And this got a little confusing. I had to go back and look at the chart to figure out what you were saying here. Um, um, maybe to make that a little more clear, I would do a full stop here and then say yeah, I don't know why you've put that in there um, well, we've already talked about how Madrid is going to be the most um, popular destination for Mexican tourists I don't know, you're, you're a little over the word count here I, I mean I'd almost be inclined to take that out and just in the in the essay there uh, that was a little confusing and you've already mentioned that Madrid is the most um, popular because this paragraph is really talking about um, the second city of destination of choice um, so it seems odd that you've included that information there just my point of view on that uh, it was a little confusing for me for it to be included there goodwill I thought uh, this was also a very good essay I think um, on balance, your task two was much better this time than your task one. I definitely think you're there or thereabouts with that 7.0. Um, you write really, really well. Uh, I think it might just depend on what type of essay you get on the day. Here you probably, in your task one, would have lost a few points. Might not have got you to the exactly um, uh, 7.0 that you needed here because of the interpretation of the uh, thousands per year and then your decision to go 20 per thousand that might have hindered your your score a little bit um, but I don't think that's overall uh, a general comment on the way you write your writing your task too is uh, really really good and definitely um, in my opinion up there uh, with a 7.0 possibility um, but this also all depends if you're doing this under the exam conditions so let me know. Okay, as before, add any mistakes to your error list. Correct these two essays with the suggestions given. Uh, go ahead and write the next two set of essays. And do make sure, if you haven't been doing it already, write those two essays under exam conditions. And uh, send them back to me so that I can have a look at them. And uh, yeah, that is all for now. Well, keep up the great work, and I look forward to seeing you next essay soon. Bye for now.